When the Rolling Stones arrived in Sydney in 1965 and 1966 for Harry and Miller, they certainly created a stir. But it was nothing quite like what happened when they arrived in 1972. By that time, they were flamboyant princes of rock. They took up residence in the penthouse of the Hyatt Kingsgate Hotel here at the top of the cross, and they truly made themselves at home. In fact, one day, a little old lady from one of the floors below came down to the front desk and asked if the manager could perhaps have a word to those Rolling Stones about turning down their record player a bit. Well, he, a little nervously, got in the lift and went up to the penthouse. And when the doors opened, what he found was the Rolling Stones in full rehearsal mode, them having arranged for their roadies to set up their entire concert PA in their hotel room. Stars and hotel management have never been, if you pardon the pun, the best of bedfellows. As far as I know, the Beatles never trashed a hotel room, yet their very presence, just a few hundred metres down the road in Maclay Street, caused the management of one prestigious Sydney hotel headaches of a different kind. Well, here I am in Maclay Street, Potts Point, on a fairly easy and comfortable day. But if I had been here on June 11, 1964, I wouldn't have been able to stand up. I would have been in the middle of a riot, of a war zone, because up there was, in residence, the greatest entertainment act of the time. The Beatles had come to town, and with four major hotels refusing to accommodate them, they had been put up there in the Sheraton Hotel at Potts Point. Now, one of the hotels that wouldn't have them, citing reasons of inconvenience to guests, was the Chevron. The Chevron is now this Woolies you see here. Now, the Chevron wouldn't have the Beatles so as to protect their guests. However, all the fans that came to see the Fab Four trampled their flower beds, blocked their halls, deafened their guests. The Chevron got all of the inconvenience and none of the publicity. It was not, in business terms, a very smart move. When I wrote my book on the Beatles Australian tour, I had to gather hundreds of photographs. And one that I knew had to be there was the one that was plastered over the newspapers in Sydney on that date, June 11, 1964. It had three of the Beatles, because Ringo was still in England, out there on the balcony with the one in the middle, George, wrapped in a towel. You see, they'd arrived in a torrential downpour at Mascot Airport and their clothes were drenched. They'd sent them out to get cleaned and dried and had nothing to wear. But the fans going berserk down here and they had to make an appearance. So George wraps the towel around himself, came out and started waving and of course you can imagine the reaction here from the crowds and the film crews as well. And everyone in the news that night seemed to believe that George was wearing his underpants. Not the case at all, a simple hotel towel. On the subject of hotels and the cross, a short walk from Maclay Street past the El Alamein Fountain to Elizabeth Bay Road leads you to a sacred site for a whole generation of Australian and international rock glitterati. You know they say the best years of your life? Well, from the late 70s as a rock journalist in Sydney, I think I spent about half my life in that building here on Elizabeth Bay Road just behind King's Cross. That used to be the Siebel townhouse. And the reason I spent so much time here is that every visiting act, and I underline every visiting act of any consequence, stayed there. And this is where I'd come sometimes two or three times a week to interview Mark Knopfler or Carlos Santana or Elton John or Randy Newman. More names than I can actually remember. This place was so popular that Elton actually lived in it for six months. It boasted staff that understood every need, every peccadillo of the performing artist. And it was so hugely popular with the music industry that award nights and ceremonies always ended with everybody trooping here for the party that went on till dawn. And in fact, the last party here, after an ARIA Awards, ended up with the participants carting home pieces of the building. In fact, the bar itself was sold at auction for charity. I swear there'll never be another hotel in Sydney like 
the Seaball Townhouse. We will return with the dawning of the Age of Aquarius and a sacred Sydney rock site still standing in all its Art Deco glory. Mm -hmm.